Now that we've understood a little bit about the preliminaries to the measure phase and what we're going to try and accomplish, we want to turn and concentrate on what we're actually going to do in the measure phase. Perhaps the most important thing is to understand the nature of the process that's being performed. Remember, all variation is measured in the context of the process. And so what we want to do is discover as much as possible we can about how the process works. So whether we have a product going through the process and we're going to incrementally build it over a period of time, or we have a service that's developing over a series of transactions and delivered to a customer. In either way, we have to understand what is the process. Now, there are different viewpoints or perspectives that we can have for discovering the process. We've already talked about some of them so far in the Greenbelt program. For instance, we talked about the SIPOC map. What we said about the SIPOC map is that it's a very high level in terms of abstraction uh, understanding of the, the context, if you will, or the boundary conditions that describe the external uh, dimensions of the process that we're actually going to focus on. And so what we discover from the SIPOC map is a high-level view of the process. What are the influences coming from the outside, the suppliers, if you will? What are the deliverables that are going to the outside, if you will, the services or the products that we have? And then inside that, how do we transform inputs into process, into outputs? And that transformation process, somewhere in that area, as we decompose it and look at higher levels of detail uh, below, this, uh, below this SIPOC level, someplace we will understand where we actually need to concentrate for the process. The second type of diagram we'll have is a spaghetti map. So we've talked about the spaghetti diagram and a way of us trying to trace as we physically go through the process and follow it from one end to the other. And we see the mess that's actually been created there. Now, as we're looking at that mess, if you will, what we're discovering is all the potential causes. We should be recording some of the things. We'll see different types of waste happening. We'll understand the flow of the process better. So the spaghetti diagram isn't about building logic. It's about building your experience as an analyst and giving you a capability to understand and interpret what are those flows, which ones matter, and what's the rationale or the reason that people are using the flows that they do today. The third type of diagram that we're going to talk about is called a deployment diagram. And we've already described this also. This is the swim lanes diagram that appears in Visio. And the idea is that we have different roles, if you will, or different categories of, of functions. And for each one of those, we can describe this type of work as a process diagram. And so we see the work they do is in the swim lane. And then we'll also see the integration across those swim lanes where collaborative work is happening, or there's a handoff from one function or process or role to another. And what we see in this is the idea of the collaborative work environment. So anytime we have a procedure, a work procedure, where there's more than one person or one team involved, we should be able to describe that and, and, and draw that, if you will, as a deployment diagram. When we see those handoffs, we should be worrying about what is the measurable event there? How do we make sure that the quality provided by one group is actually acceptable to the second group? So we should look at what are measurement control points. Where do we capture measurements in that process? And we should also look then at the stop and start times and see where is time actually accumulated. We should make judgments about the value component of that time. So how much time in each of those buckets that we're looking at as we string this from the beginning of the process in time series to the end of the process, how much in each one of those little segments are we actually doing value-adding work? How much time is waiting time? How much time is, if you're a rework time or scrapping time, where we're taking a look at doing quality checks and fixing things? And how much time is required time? We have to do it, but we should minimize that type of time. So the deployment diagram is going to give us this first sort of end-to-end -end view about where we can start taking time out of the process. Now, when we actually get involved in a particular flow in that line, and we want to follow one particular service or one particular product from the end to the end, we would see this is now linear process flow. Sometimes this is called a thought map. And the idea is we have the sequence of steps, each step in the sequence. And even though they may not be quite linear in terms of the time, we can indicate the start and the stop times. Within each step, we can understand what are the cost components. We should be able to understand the quality components and the defect types. 
we should be able to understand what are the different resources required in each of those, what is the command signal that tells us it should operate, what's the information flow, and what is the transformation of the materials or the information as a product is being developed or as a service is being created. So the idea of the thought map is this is a detailed level of analysis where we should be able to now specify all of the things that we see in the baseline performance for a particular process. And now there at, the, at this level, we're at the process level of interest where we want to do our improvement based on that analysis. So the graphical representation does something important for us. What it does is it provides us an anchor point to the real world out there. George Box, a statistician, once said, all models are wrong, but some models are helpful. And for us to analyze a performance, we have to have not just a data view, but we have to have the process view. And we have to have a way to marry the data view and the process view in order to get profound knowledge about the process. Because as we said, profound knowledge is knowledge of the system. That means we have to have this process view and how the processes fit together. It's about variation. And that means we have to have the measurements, and they have to be good and understood across the process. It's also about the human beings or the psychology in the process. So we have to know the interactions of the people. And then finally, it's about the theory of knowledge. How do we actually use this process to generate outcomes that make a difference? And we get the theory of knowledge or the knowledge of the system performance based on the first three. If we have the psychology, if we have the statistical measurement system, and we have the understanding of the people, when we observe how they operate, we will then be able to create a theory of knowledge about how can we improve the performance of that process. And so each of those is a graphical view. You will have to determine for your project where you start, how much detail you need to have until you get clarity about what is it that needs to be improved. Now, this is more of an art, if you will, in determining the proper diagrams and how many you have to have than it is a science. But just remember, if you can't explain exactly what's happening, if the measurement systems you have don't relate to flow of work, you probably have to go to another level of detail to get the right explanation of how the process is actually working in reality.